Hello everyone, it's Laura Jane. Thank you for joining me today. I am coloring the massive peony stamp from Gina K Designs. This gorgeous stamp was designed by Hannah Trapinski. I stamped the massive peony in Barely There Amalgam Ink from Gina K Designs as well. This is called Barely There and as you can see you can just barely see it. The paper I'm using is the Artist's Choice 110 pound and I am coloring with the Arteza Real Brush Pens. This first color I'm using is called Light Skin, uh, number 135, and I'm just adding in where I think color should be for the shadows. Um, I just did straight to paper and then I took a little bit of uh, clear water and tried to move some of the color around and decided, eh, let's go back in with the pen. <laughs> and uh, I added some more there. Then I went to Fair Skin, which is 116. It was a little bit darker uh, color. And I thought these complemented that Barely There Amalgam ink. Next, I moved on to the Large Leaves and started with Pear Green 170. And I like to outline the leaves and kind of map out where I want some of the darker shadows to be. Next I picked up Spearmint Blue for the small leaves. Uh, that number is 181. Again, I'm just outlining those leaves really quickly, blocking in the color for the composition getting a, a nice balance. Uh, I'm kind of seeing a triangle of color there with the leaves. I like that uh, very much. I like a blue leaf as well. Then moved on to the yellow of those tiny blooms. This is lemon yellow, number 105. Every floral composition needs some yellow. It just makes it happy. So after um, I've got the colors down, then I go in with darker shades of each color. So the next color of green is Crocodile Green, number 126. I'm adding that in the very, very darkest um, parts of the shadows. And then Pea Green is number 150. Every once in a while I come back in with some water and try to move some of the color around. Uh, this paper handles water um, just a bit of water without uh, pilling or, or causing any trouble. Just pretty much start outlining again uh, those smaller leaves. Then I come in with the flamingo pink for the center of the large peony and in a some of the darker areas of the shadows. Then I come back in with that uh, light and fair skin uh, pen to kind of move the color around a little bit more. I decided to use the pens to move the color around instead of water. As you can see, I like to move around um, from one thing, one color family to the next uh, so that they can dry in between each section. Um, also, it gives me time to think where I want to go. My color choices are kind of in the same family group for each section, um, but I am color plucking of sorts. Uh, that term that you can get from uh, Kathy Rakusen and her coloring challenge. So I'm moving in and around with the yellow flowers, adding more orange and some pinks, and now I am pretty much just dancing around with all the different colors. I will list the colors that I use in the description box below. There are quite a few of them. And as this is a time-lapse video, it is really hard uh, to list exactly when I'm using it where. I just wanted you to get an idea of how I add the color, uh, what color family I'm going with, and I, I just hope you enjoy uh, watching this come together. My goal is to keep the blooms as white as possible. What happens is I end up with a lightly colored flower. If I start out to have a pink 
flower, it's going to be red because I just keep adding color. As you'll see, I just keep adding more and more. My coloring style is not smoothly blended. I like a sketchy, multicolor look on each little image, each little leaf or petal. I like to see the variations um, just for interest. In the end, I grabbed a few of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers for the very fine line details that I like to add um, in the end of the project here. Then I created a mask using Gina's Masking Magic paper, covered this entire image, and then brushed on the Amalgam Barely There ink for some overall background shadow and flicked some color on for some interesting uh, splatters. And then my card was finished. I matted it several times with some uh, shades of blue and then black. I decided that I did not want to put a sentiment on the card itself. I thought it uh, was pretty as is and may end up framing it. Thank you so much, Gina Kay and family, for sending this to me. I had a great time coloring, and I look forward to uh, trying this in another color as well. We'll see you next time.